You feel like sleeping in this weekend? Yes. Well, Sunday, we get back <laughs> an hour. I feel like sleeping in every right single day. <laughs> Dr. Ashkan Abedini, Family Medicine, Sharp Restealy, joining us now. Doctor, good morning. Good morning. We're very, uh, what's the proper sleep word? Sleep deprived. We're sleep deprived. Sleep thirsty. We're sensitive to the conversation about sleep because of our schedules. Let's talk about this time change and how it really does impact sleep. Chrissy just said it. It's still disruptive no matter what, but how does it actually impact our sleep? Great question. Typically with the time change, it's going to be very minimal uh, effect on the body in general for the normal, for the average individual. Um, our body will take usually you probably feel a little bit more tired and really later on in the afternoon and then for teenagers it's actually beneficial because the change will affect or, or mirror their natural circadian rhythm and therefore be more productive in the morning whereas in the elderly it could be the opposite as their uh, circadian rhythm is regulated by them getting up early to go to bed or getting up early and going to bed early at night mm. which one is harder on the body is it when we spring forward or fall back Typically springing forward. That's, yeah, that's, that's what we yeah. feel the, the most. <laughs> Can we stop that? Didn't we, Chrissy, didn't we vote a bunch of times to make this go away? Why is this still a thing? It's usually just to get the body back into this normal circadian yeah. rhythm and, you know, trying to help the body adjust. Okay, so w after this weekend, it's, I was talking to my kids about this yesterday, trying to explain. I said it's going to get dark earlier, which means we get to tell our kids to go to bed earlier. We're not convincing <laughs> them to wait for the, the moon anymore. Uh, what could we do now as we're going into the weekend to kind of like prepare for this shift back to what we like to say is normal? Right, so the best way to shift back into normalcy would be to maximize your exposure to light during the day and typically as always you want to minimize your artificial light exposure at night time especially mm -hmm. when we're in bed this includes watching TV being on the computer yeah. electronic uh, devices anything that emits a blue light we want to try to avoid that I feel like in the past few years the conversations about sleep have really just become so robust like the the notion that we don't get enough sleep and what it is doing to our bodies um, you know, it's being taken seriously, I think, on a totally different level now than it's ever been before. Right, yeah, and that, that's a great question. And one of my favorite topics to discuss with my patients in the clinic is that I always focus on three things. One, exercise, trying to get at least 30 minutes of physical activity per day, and this will help not only your cardiovascular health, but yeah. also your well-being. And then stretching afterwards will help get rid of the lactic acid that builds up into the muscles, and therefore you don't feel as sore the next day. Wow. The second thing we talk about is trying to avoid any of those um, electronics in the bedroom. You know, yeah. We try to focus for bedroom just for sleep. And the last thing I think most important is trying to slow down our brain. During the day, we're so busy and fast-paced, trying to take some at least five minutes for yourself, meditate, you know, mindfulness, and even breathing exercise yeah. to help slow the brain down. Exactly. That's easier said than done. It is, everybody absolutely. now plugs in their phone at night. We're all doing this right before we go to bed. And then we absolutely. wonder why we actually go to bed. And your mind is literally just racing and racing. Exactly. That's not good for your rest exactly. or your sleep. I want to talk about uh, the sleep sleep debt. Right. Right. Uh, there's, I've read different things that you can't make up the sleep if you've lost it. Maybe you can. Maybe depends on the study you're reading that particular day. Um, can you ever really catch up on your sleep when you have that sleep debt? Yes, and the way Thank I you. think about and the way I think about it is that yes. you know our body's like a cell phone. We don't if we don't charge it to a full capacity, yeah. it doesn't really function well the next day. If you go up to ninety percent charge, you use it the next day. Yeah. You you don't get the full effect of your phone, and so with this one hour of sleep, this can't help pay down that sleep debt. What about napping? Like for our schedules, we're a little bit earlier than most people. Um, are, are naps good, and how long, and at what different age do these wow, naps help? Let's I'm all listen, I'm all about it. Um, are naps doctor. good, first of all, and are they better the older you get, or not? Because I know when you're like a little kid, people, little babies take naps. And right, and as you know, <laughs> kids are born, you know, they're, they're like on a jet lag for nine months, pretty much, and so <laughs> trying to... <laughs> Trying to nap and, you know, you can't pay down your sleep debt with that napping. But if you nap too much, that can affect your sleep in the evenings. I see. So how about a good amount? A, a roughly about 30 minutes would be a, a good amount. Did you hear that? 30 do minutes. Do I have to set an alarm? I mean, do people, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, should people, <laughs> I said should do people? I. Should yeah. people? <laughs> set an alarm is okay? Or? It's okay, yeah. And, okay. you know, if you're napping for more than one or two yeah. hours, that's that could be more detrimental. But do you recommend napping on, like, a sofa or, like, go to your bed and get wow. comfortable? I would say on the, on anywhere outside the bedroom because once you get into the bedroom, <laughs> it can, you know, lead to one hour or two hour nap. 
Thank you. Do you have any other questions? <laughs> I, I really do. <laughs> <laughs> so as we get into this weekend, so we're gonna we're gonna fall back. Uh, this is a good opportunity to kind of just like fine tune your your sleeping skills. So what would be your final piece of advice to people as they get into this weekend and if they've been struggling sleeping over the yeah. past few months? Take advantage of the one hour. You know, you've been putting your body through a lot of stress and your mind through a lot of stress. So taking that one extra hour to get that restful sleep, but don't overdo it. You know, try to utilize the sunlight outside and get the vitamin D, it increases your energy, um, and you know, it can help with the mood as well. I'm interested in like sleep patterns in different people because people assume that because we have the schedule that on weekends I just automatically wake up at like three or four in the morning. Right. No, 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 I, I can once, if I don't have to go to work, I sleep right through it. Is right. that normal? And it can't be, yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't wake up. I got my doc the doctors right <laughs> Thank here, you, I gotta doctor. ask. Thank you, uh, Great information, thank you so much Thanks. for being here.